Welcome back to Revolutionary War Rarities, the podcast from the Sons of the American Revolution. Today we present Season 2, Episode 3, entitled The Rhode Island First, where you will learn some of the details behind the integrated regiment of colonials fighting for freedom in the American Revolution. But before we get to that, let's ask our trivia question for this episode. What future first lady was quoted as saying, it always appeared a most iniquitous scheme to me to fight ourselves for what we are daily robbing and plundering from those who have as good a right to freedom as we have. Now stay tuned for the answer somewhere within this episode, and we thank you for being a part of Revolutionary War Rarities, the podcast from the Sons of the American Revolution. The Rhode Island First, Season 2, Episode 3. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of Revolutionary War Rarities. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maples. Jim, we all know that American history has included incredible heroes, accomplishments, and overcoming a lot of odds. We're also aware that all of American history is not something that we're proud of. As a matter of fact, some of our history is repulsive and something that our country has spent hundreds of years trying to overcome. However, we believe that it is critical to understand all of our history, both the good and the bad, and this particular episode addresses both. That's right. Today we're going to talk about black participation in the American Revolution. It is a sordid history. It involved incredible men accomplishing incredible feats for the purpose of liberty, which they were not guaranteed. But nevertheless, the lack of guarantee did not stop them from fighting. Let's take a look at the 1st Rhode Island Infantry Regiment. In 1775, slavery was recognized in many American colonies, both North and South. It turns out that it was not originally permissible for blacks, free or enslaved, to serve in the Continental Army for fear of a rebellion. However, in 1775, the Earl of Dunmore, also known as John Murray, issued Dunmore's Proclamation, and that proclamation guaranteed freedom for any enslaved individual who would join the British cause during the American Revolution. This resulted in about 20,000 enslaved individuals uh, escaping to fight for the British. Jim, it turns out that the various states were unable to fulfill their commitment on numbers of militia that were required. Therefore, it was proposed to include blacks in the ranks of American soldiers who would be guaranteed their freedom if they fought for the duration of the war on the American side. This resulted in approximately 9,000 blacks who fought for the Americans. So a total of roughly 29,000 blacks fought during the American Revolution. So here's where the first Rhode Island enters the discussion. In 1778, the Rhode Island Assembly agreed to a suggestion from General James Barnum to allow the enlistment of freed and enslaved black men. Their freedom would then be guaranteed. The owners of those enslaved individuals would be guaranteed payment by Rhode Island for the market value of those individuals. The regiment had approximately 225 men, of which it is believed that as many as 140 of those men could have been black. Okay, let's pause there for just a minute and answer this week's trivia question. The question was, what future first lady was quoted as saying, it always appeared a most iniquitous scheme to me to fight ourselves for what we are daily robbing and plundering from those who have as good a right to freedom as we have? The answer. Abigail Adams. Now, back to this week's episode. Jim, beyond the 1st Rhode Island Regiment, there were many additional blacks who served valiantly in the American Revolution. Names such as Peter Salem, Salem Poor, Seymour Burr, Prince Whipple, Cato Howe, Titus Corbin, Jim Capers, Alexander Ames, Barzillian Lowe, and Prince Estabrook were all blacks who fought for American independence and the hope of freedom and liberty. And the list of names goes on. Okay, so there's no way to adequately cover this subject in eight to ten minutes, so I'm sure there will be additional podcasts dedicated to African-American involvement in the American Revolution. But for the purpose of this episode, I have some trivia questions for you, Jim Maples. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Question number one, the 1st Rhode Island Regiment was integrated and fought valiantly during the American Revolution. But do you know how many integrated American military units existed 
from the American Revolution through World War One. Dim, the answer to that question is one. The first Rhode Island represented the only officially integrated unit until President Truman issued Executive Order 1948, officially ending segregation in the American military. Amazing. So what battles did the first Rhode Island... <laughs> Rhode Island. So what battles did the first Rhode Island Regiment fight in? Dim, the first Rhode Island Regiment fought throughout the entirety of the American Revolution, all the way from the siege of Boston through the siege and the Battle of Yorktown. Now, they were previously known as Barnum's Regiment in 1775 and the 9th Continental Regiment in 1776. They did not become the 1st Rhode Island Regiment until 1777, but they fought for the duration of the war. So what happened to the members of the 1st Rhode Island Regiment after the war? Well, there were some attempts to re-enslave some of the men. Some were not paid what they were owed, and some never received the 100 acres of bounding land that they were promised. The last commander of the 1st Rhode Island, Jeremiah Aldi, did fight for his men after the war in an effort to ensure that they received all that they were owed. There was some success in this effort, but it was not 100% successful. So promises were not always kept, and sadly that continued well beyond the American Revolution. After the American Revolution, during the War of 1812, there were similar promises made at the Battle of New Orleans by Andrew Jackson, and those promises were also broken. After the Civil War, there were Jim Crow laws designed to further disenfranchise African Americans. So the battles fought for freedom and liberty by black Americans have lasted throughout the life of our great nation. Thankfully, discriminatory laws and practices have been outlawed by everything from constitutional amendments to local and national laws. The 1st Rhode Island Regiment was critical to the success of the American Revolution, just as African Americans are critical to the success of our great nation to this day. So today, the Sons of the American Revolution salute the 1st Rhode Island Regiment for the fights they fought and the lessons they taught. Booker T. Washington is quoted as having said, I have learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as to the obstacles which he has to, had to overcome while trying right. to succeed. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maples. And we thank you for joining us today. And be sure to join us for the next episode of Revolutionary War Rarities. This has been a production of the National Society, Sons of the American Revolution, www.sar.org. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of Revolutionary War Rarities. Please don't forget to join our Facebook group. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell so that you will be notified when a new episode is released. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast application as well. We will see you again in two weeks with another episode of Revolutionary War Rarities. Until then, stay safe.